Hello and welcome back. This is Arun Patwardhan and today I will be talking about conditional checks in scripts. In the previous session we looked at how to manage information in a script. Let us now try to make our script a little safer by checking if everything is okay before proceeding ahead. There are two things we will be covering in this session. What are the different conditions that we can check for? And how do we perform those checks? The main reason why we would want to perform checks is to make sure that certain criteria are met or if certain resources are present. Only if these conditions are satisfied will we proceed ahead. Or of course we could choose to take an alternative course of action in case the condition isn't met. We can find all these checks in the man page for the test command. Let us look at some of those checks. The dash followed by a letter and then the file name allows us to check for different aspects of a file, such as whether a file exists, whether it exists and it's a directory, whether it's an executable, and more. We can even compare files with each other. It's even possible for us to go ahead and compare two separate strings. This is useful especially in situations where we are passing say for example information to a script or we are reading some information that is there within the script and would like to see if the value is what we expect it to be. The same thing can be done with numbers also, useful if we are manipulating numbers. Now that we've seen the different conditions that are available, let us go ahead and see how we can perform checks. First up, we have the if statement. It is used when we want to perform a task if a certain condition is satisfied. Let us break down the statement part by part to see how it works. First, we have the keyword if, indicating that it's an if statement. This is followed by the condition check expression, which is within two square brackets, followed by a colon. We then have the keyword then, which indicates that the commands that are to be executed if the statement is true, are going to follow up. What follows are the different commands or tasks that need to be performed if the condition was true. There may be more, one, more than one command or task which could be listed out here. Finally, we end the if statement with a fee or if in reverse. The if statement has another variation with the else clause in it, where we have the option of offering an alternate set of commands that need to be executed in case the if condition check fails. Let us break it down to see how this works. First we have the if, followed by the condition check, the then keyword and the tasks to be performed if the condition check is successful. Else, which is the keyword that indicates that there are alternative tasks that need to be done if the condition check fails, followed by the list of alternative tasks or commands to be executed when the check has failed. All this ends with a fee to indicate that the if statement is over. There is yet another variation of the if statement with the elif. The elif takes the if statement further by allowing for multiple conditions to be checked within a single statement. Let us break it down. First we have the if followed by the condition check, followed by the then keyword, 
followed by the list of tasks or commands to be executed if the condition check succeeds, followed by the elif keyword and another condition check which will be performed only if the previous condition check failed. So this could be an alternative condition check. Followed again by the then keyword and a list of tasks or commands that should be run if the alternative condition check is successful. And in the end, we can have a default fall through for the through and else, which is the last alternative where we perform a default set of tasks. All this again closes with the fee or the reverse if. We can have as, as many elif options within our command as we want. We do not have to have an else. There's a lot of flexibility available with the if command. We can design it exactly the way we want. There is another operator available which is useful, and that is the case statement. The case statement is useful when we have to choose between different options. It is similar to the if, but it's a lot easier to read. Let us break it down to see how it works. First up, we have the keyword case, indicating that the case statement is beginning. followed by the variable whose value we are looking out for. The in keyword indicates that the different options are now going to appear. Each option has the value expected followed by a round bracket. This is followed up with statements that will be executed if the variable has the value that is mentioned in this option. At the end of all the tasks, we have double semicolons to indicate that this option is over. We repeat the same thing with more options for each value with a round bracket after it, followed by tasks to be performed if that value is present in the variable. All those tasks always end with Two semicolons. We can even have a default option if none of the previous values are present in the variable. This is represented by a star followed by a round bracket. And they too can have their own commands that need to be executed if it's a default case. These also end with two semicolons. Just like the if, the case statement also ends with the keyword case written in reverse order, ESAC, and that would indicate that the case statement is over. Now that we've seen some options for how we could perform checks, let us go ahead and modify our script to make it better with the help of condition checks. We have the file from the previous version of our script. Before we start using our condition check statements, let us identify situations where we could effectively use these things. We want to perform condition checks where there is a possibility that something may not be present or may not be exactly what we want. For example, when we are assigning the value of the positional variable to our tools folder, Maybe there are no arguments that are being passed to the script itself. So there may not be any data in our positional variables. Therefore, we would like to check if they have some data in it before assigning the value to our tools folder variable. Maybe we could have a default value in its place. These would be good candidates for our condition check. Another place where we could use condition checks would be the creation of our folders. Maybe the user has already created those folders manually and they already exist, in which case we don't want to go ahead and create our own folders. Instead, we would like to check and see if the folder exists 
and only go ahead and create it if it doesn't exist. So let us start off by modifying our scripts. Here's what we're going to do. We will first declare our variables with default values. So let me copy them and paste them right out here and give them default values. So these would be the values that would be assigned if our positional variables did not hold or do not hold any values. Now, we will replace these statements here with an if statement. So what do I do? I say if $1 is not empty, then give the value of $1 into tools fold. I could have put an else out here and put a default value instead, but I don't need to do that because if this condition fails, the default value still holds true. And I will do the same thing for the reports folder as well as the help folder. Now let us modify our folder creation. So what do I want to do? I want to make sure that if there is a folder called tools folder, then let us echo out a message to the log file. with the date saying that not creating tools folder as it already exists. And of course, we will redirect this to our log. Else, if it doesn't exist, then we will go ahead and create our tools folder and at the same time we will echo out a message to the log file stating that we are creating the tools folder and redirect it to the log file. This makes our folder creation process more robust and stable. And by logging the actions in a log file, we can tell whether the folder was created or it already existed when we attempted to create it. Useful information when we are trying to debug. And I will do the same thing for the reports folder as well as for the help folder. And there you go. So we've added nice safety checks to all our folder creation logics, making sure that the folder doesn't exist before we go ahead and try to create. This is just a simple example of how we could use the if statement to check to see whether something is present before using it. To summarize, the ability to check whether certain criteria are met or not is very useful. This means that we can now write our scripts in a safe and robust way where we check before performing some actions. This prevents unintended outcomes and also allows for a more scalable script. Using condition checks is a very good idea and something script writers must adopt while writing scripts. Thank you.